Sasha Sipath and today I'm finally reacting to the infamous video by Dr. Ramani where she deciphers between a narcissist, a psychopath and a sociopath. Do I agree? Do I disagree? Let's jump into it. What is the difference between a sociopath, a psychopath and a narcissist? Here to answer this intense question is Dr. Ramani. Help us out here. Well, it's, you know, again, there's a lot of overlap, but the fact is a lot of people are using these terms interchangeably. Mm. They, and they should they be? Sociopath, they psych, but no, they no. shouldn't. They're okay. different things, okay? One rule of thumb to remember right off the bat, every psychopath is narcissistic, but not every narcissist is psychopathic. This I couldn't agree more with. Absolutely every single sociopath and psychopath is a narcissist but the reverse is not necessarily true. This is a very important distinction to make. Makes sense, there, there's, there's your key difference. A narcissist is somebody who lacks empathy, is grandiose, is entitled, is constantly seeking validation, is arrogant. Um, it's a disorder of self-esteem and they have trouble regulating their self-esteem. So I do know that narcissists lack empathy, but from what I've seen, Narcissists tend to have a lot more empathy than sociopaths and psychopaths. I don't know if this is just what I've experienced, but honestly, they do have a little bit of empathy. They do. The bad thing, they feel a fair amount of guilt and shame. More shame than guilt, frankly, because they're concerned about how other people view them. Shame is a public emotion. So they don't like being viewed. Narcissists love being in complete control of their entire image. So absolutely, they do not want to be seen as doing something bad by the public. Inside, they don't care. They don't feel anything inside when they're doing something bad to someone else. But if it's bringing shame upon them, they're going to be crying for a week negatively in the public eye or by other people, that's where the shame comes from. But they'll feel a little bad. Like if they cheat on their wife, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Psychopaths are a different animal. They're all of those things except no guilt, no shame. Wow. They don't feel remorse when they do something bad. Wow. So they're, they're great um, serial killers. Oh hired assassins, um, people who are gonna go in and literally sort of gut a business. These are your guys, they're like, I don't, I don't care who gets hurt. They'd say that and they'd mean it. This is so accurate. I mean, sociopaths and psychopaths, they have absolutely no remorse, no guilt when they're doing something terrible. I know this because I do terrible things all the time and I literally feel nothing. I actually did talk about wanting to gut the business that my father used to work for because they did fire him after he worked for them for 20 years having brain cancer I would gut them from the inside out that may be because of rage but I feel like that would be a lot of fun when I say I don't care about hurting people I genuinely do not care when I hurt people okay where a narcissist is like I hope no one gets hurt okay the difference between the psychopath and the sociopath is the one where most people get confused because the sociopath is a lot like the psychopath. They do bad things and they don't care, okay? Here's the key difference. A psychopath is born and a sociopath is made. Mm. I keep telling everybody this. A psychopath is born, a sociopath is made. While I do believe that I have genetic imprints which do make me more likely to become a sociopath, I have had the environment that had really brought it out. Just saying. Okay, that's the key. So a psychopath, in fact, we know in the research on psychopathy, which has also been called antisocial person. For all of you who've been bitching about me using the word sociopath instead of ASPD, she's a psychotherapist and she's using them. I told you there is a difference and we need to use those terms and I'll continue using those terms. Thing. Diagnostic manual. These are people who are actually believed to have slightly different autonomic nervous systems. Our autonomic nervous system is actually that part that holds our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight and flight system. So when our autonomic nervous system for a normal person gets charged up, which it would if we broke a rule, if we did something embarrassing or rude, if we ran through a red light, our heart starts racing. Mm -hmm. We sweat, our, our pupils. My heart does not go up, even if I'm crossing the street and I almost get hit by a car. 
This is why I do think I could easily pass a lie detector test. I'm thinking if I get to the right number of subs, which is probably a million, I will take one for the team. Bugs get wide. We look around because we're afraid of the consequence. A psychopath doesn't have that same kind of arousal. That's why they're able to lie on lie detector tests. That's how they get away with it. They don't have that same kind of arousal. So where you or I may go on a roller coaster, feel that sense of excitement, we need to get that arousal in a good way. We don't like feeling it when we do something wrong. They don't feel it. So they do they get it. stressed? No, not in the same way. So if they're driving, mm -hmm. Because if I'm driving mm -hmm. and I see police sirens coming behind me, I mean, it is a full on, oh, oh yeah. my gosh, I can't believe I'm gonna You're get pulled over. Path. If the police roll up behind me, I'm just thinking about the ways that I can say no comment, because the one thing I've always known is don't talk to police. FBI, open up! <laughs> I do not get my heart race in a tizzy though. I, I, the heart rate is not, it's not freaking out. I'm sorry. Psychopath would see that and go, oh, I'm gonna get pulled over. Well, this could be, they could have a dead body in the trunk and they wouldn't, they wouldn't change. And so they special. pull over, they get the ticket. Do you know that this actually happened to Jeffrey Dahmer and he did have a body in the trunk? It was his first kill. It's kind of crazy. And they don't care. No, they don't care. And they pay the ticket? If, and maybe not, they'll even probably get an attorney to get them off or say, yeah, you know, my understanding of your state laws is you can't really be doing this and they'll be cool as can be. And this is, this is a, a difference in their they're actually their makeup. nervous systems are wired and their brains are. There's actually been interesting research done with PET scans where you can see brain function. And what I really want to get this test done. I want to see if my brain lights up because I have a theory that my amygdala just doesn't work and I want to see if that pans out. Not you just a clarification, not pet like dogs and cats, PET -E -T yeah, scans. Yes. On emission tomography scans yes. of the brain which show brain functioning, if you will. And what they see is that the, the section of the brain that serves empathy, that doesn't naturally light up in them. And you can actually... It is so not gonna light up in my scans. Teach them to be empathic for a minute, but it doesn't last. A lot of psychopaths who commit violent crimes end up in jail. And the ones who commit more like white collar crimes, I guess they end up as multi-billionaires because they're willing to do really, really rough stuff in their business and get through like a cartel leader or something like that. Call for the killings of other people. Now, I'm at the point where I do this and I don't even need to do this for a business, you know? I'm like trying to plan these things, trying to not get caught. Just uh, hopefully I don't end up going through with one of these plans. Their interesting um, counterpart are the sociopaths. Psychopaths born, they tend to, that their belief is that they may very well have, this might be genetic. In fact, psychopaths often have fathers who have lots of antisocial tendencies. Now, how much of it is learned, how much of it is genetic, it's a little bit harder to suss out, but we do see that there is that difference in your true psychopath. They also tend to be, have really glib, shallow charm. They tend to be really intelligent. That's why they get away with stuff. If they were So they've, really they've learned mess. behavior to yeah. assimilate into society. Oh yeah. But there is, it's all a facade. It's all a facade, they're so. It is all a facade. My dad is definitely high on the ASPD traits. He is kind of the reason why I have never been able to express emotions, never been allowed to feel emotions, because when I did cry when I was younger, my father would put me in my room and I wasn't allowed to come out until I was talking properly, which meant not crying. So I learned pretty early not to have emotions. So oh, charming. So if they're born this way, would a three-year-old then not get stressed out if it got no. scared? Ted Bundy, when he was three, he put knives all around his auntie, aiming at her. I just found that really wild. So uh, that's incredible. So what we see when we diagnose antisocial personality disorder, which is sort of our diagnostic equivalent of being a psychopath, in order to get that diagnosis, you have to have shown a pattern prior to the age of 15 of things like truancy, violence towards other kids, stealing, skipping school. And not felt bad animals, about it. Setting fires, they just do it, they don't care. And that- So 
While I didn't torture animals because I love them to death, I was a nightmare for everybody around me at school. Teachers, students, my parents, everybody. I would get into trouble constantly. I pushed a girl down the stairs. So basically, at one point, this girl who was at my school, she called my friend fat. And now this is something that gets thrown at girls and women a lot. But when she said that, I got especially angry. I decided to corner her at a specific time before lunch when I knew that we had the same building to go into. Now, there's a very steep set of stairs in this building and she conveniently fell down the whole flight. When I was called in to talk about this with the vice principal, let's just say I started crying and saying I was the victim of a racial attack because I have brown skin and, you know, I was just really suffering. Also, my dad had to appear so often at my school because I would just dip. I would dip. I was like, I, w I get enough good grades. I don't need to worry about this. I'm gonna go down to the shops and hang out. And then I'd eventually convince other people to do it with me because it's just not fun on your own. So yeah, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Before the age of 15, so it's a long-standing pattern. That's what makes us call them a psychopath or having antisocial personality. Now, this is different than sociopathy. Yes, okay. Sociopathy, they look a lot like the psychopaths. The difference is they were made. So this, some examples here. The kid who grows up in a really, 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 really rough neighborhood and learns criminality to get by or learns to be a bully or like, you know, gets involved with sort of like the wrong kids and uses a lot of muscle because that's survivalism. But they, they it's not necessarily always comfortable for them. They just learn it. It's the person who grows up with a father who teaches them the business and teaches them how to break the rules. Um, they, he may but not they Okay, so this is kind of strange because obviously I grew up in a pretty nice household. We were upper middle class or lower upper class, whatever you want to call it, just comfortable. Um, I wasn't on the streets. I wasn't like fighting for my life. I just liked stealing and I liked causing chaos because I would be extremely bored. And when I was bored, people got hurt. I just find it really weird because this is kind of all stuff I associate with sociopathy. With psychopathy, I kind of assume them to be a lot more calculated and pre-planned, but it sounds like there's a lot more in common, at least from Dr. Romney's perspective. They don't, they would, would they feel, would they start sweating and have their heart race if they, they got pulled over? They might, they may, may not feel so good about it. They'll be a little bit more uncomfortable with it, but in time they learn it. And that, that what, it's almost like they, they get trained in not being as aroused by it. Listen, if you broke enough rules, if you lived under certain conditions of lawlessness long enough, you'd adjust to that. Okay, look, this kind of makes sense. I don't really remember learning these responses. I feel like they always just came to me automatically, but perhaps it is learned. I don't know. It's This is kind of eye-opening for me. New world order, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. That's what the sociopath does. Mm -hmm. And so they're the person, someone who said he was actually a great kid until he got to high school. And then it seems like you got in with the wrong kids. That feels more like the sociopath. Wow. Okay, that's almost like a training that might happen from at the, in, within the family, within their community, which isn't even the job they get, some cases even within some form of military training. Have you had sociopaths and psychopaths as clients? Mm, not really, no. no. They don't come to, tend to come in for therapy. They, they don't see any benefit to it. The only time you would tend to see psychopaths or sociopaths come into therapy with any consistency is if they were court ordered. I find this one, it hits home. But something that really hurt me recently was a psychiatrist turning me away because I had a cluster B disorder and she didn't deal with that. But when I actually first got diagnosed, it was because I tried to neck myself. So I'd gone in, you know, I was sent to hospital right away because I had to pump my stomach. And I did, like, I just, you know, once it was done, like I was like, okay, this didn't work, I'm gonna go home. Anyway, so they were like, no, you're either going to an inpatient psychiatric unit for a hold, or you're gonna go see a, a psychiatrist in private. And of course, I don't wanna go to the loony bin. So 
I took the private option. But yeah, I don't think I would have gone for sociopathy or psychopathy. I would have just gone to talk about, you know, my depression. And also I wanted to talk about getting Valium, which I ended up getting. So I thought you were gonna say um, couples therapy. No, God, no. No, no, they, it's because they're court ordered, so the judge will make that a condition of release kind of thing, or they're within prisons and jails and getting some treatment in there. Th this is so incredibly fascinating to me. If a psychopath goes to jail, he isn't upset about going to jail? Um, it's, in some ways it becomes a cost of doing business. You know, but it's also, they, no, they're not happy about it. There was. I think I would be pretty upset about my liberty being taken away because I don't do well when it comes to rules and having to wake up at certain times. But, you know, with the stuff that I've done, I was pretty comfortable with knowing, like, if I get caught, I'm probably going to jail for a little while. Or hopefully my parents will pay my way out of this. Psychopaths, and to some degree sociopaths, don't think about consequences. That's why- I have never thought about consequences. This is a very real problem. They pull really penny ante silly crimes like holding up a liquor store. Basically, I need 150 bucks, here's a liquor store, it's open, let's go get the money, kind of thing. So it's like, they act first and think later, so they often don't- This is so me. So this one time when I was like 14 or 15, I wanted to go get this dress from the shops that I had seen a couple days ago. So I ended up going through my dad's wallet and I took out the notes and also the coins from the little coin part of his wallet. And anyway, I didn't think about like, oh, he's gonna realize that I took it out of both compartments. I adds to like one person. Anyway, later he came home and he was grilling me about it. He's like, okay, I was like, you know, the note probably flew out of your wallet. Like, it wasn't me. It couldn't be any of us. Like, who would do it? And then, anyway, he's like, it's funny that the notes went out and the coins went out too. And I was just like, I have denied it to this. I have denied that until today. So, I am very sorry again if you're watching plan in terms of consequences. That's why they have a tendency to lie, cheat, steal, and they tend to have very inconsistent work histories because they, um, they're not able to hold a job. They yeah, like aliases. Um, I have not been able to consistently hold down a job. I've had so many different jobs in every single field. I just stop turning up when I don't feel like it. It's definitely like it's more of a griftery kind of a space. So we've talked in previous videos about how to cope mm -hmm. while dating a narcissist. Yeah. If you find yourself dating a sociopath or a psychopath, is there any coping or you just gotta get out? You're in trouble. You're I mean, in that, trouble. It could be, actually be a very dangerous It sounds like it. Yeah, in fact, you know, we, and, and to, even with the narcissist. I think that Sam's gonna have a lot of trouble at some point. Should he run? Narcissistic piece. Um, I do, uh, I've done research and work in the area of domestic violence or what's also called intimate partner violence. Most people who perpetrate domestic violence are either narcissistic or psychopathic. And so, so there's a danger there. In other words, they will dispose of you if you get in their way. I would dispose of someone if they were getting in my way. Thankfully, Sam never gets in my way. I want to share a story with mm -hmm. you to get your feedback. Mm -hmm. This was told to me by a friend, mm -hmm. and she said in college she dated a guy for a year, mm -hmm. but the guy started to get um, just a little weird and mm -hmm. they broke up. Uh, for the next year, he courted her mm -hmm. and did everything she wished mm -hmm. he had done the first year. Mm -hmm. Showed up on time, brought her gifts, blah, blah, blah. They started dating again. He was perfect for a year. Mm -hmm. He, they went to Thanksgiving at her family's house. He was perfect to her parents. Just became the perfect mm -hmm. man for her because right. he knew what she wanted. And after a year, on the one year anniversary, he broke up with her and said, I've been playing you this whole time because I wanted to crush your heart. Yep. I don't know if this is true, but this sounds a lot like the time Ted Bundy was dumped by his girlfriend, who we call Diane. She said he was immature, like blah, 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 that they weren't gonna work. Anyway, so he became everything that he wanted, that she wanted in a man. And finally, he ended up getting engaged to her and then he just stopped calling her, stopped writing to her. And she called him one day and said, Ted, like, what's happening with us? And he was like, I don't know what you mean, and hung up on her. 
I feel like that's a really good goal to aspire to. I am not actually behaving this way, mm -hmm. or uh, this isn't real. Yep. I've been faking it for a year just so I can crush you. Yep. Would that be a that's psych more psychopathic? Psychopathic. That's more psychopathic. You know, or sociopathic is more likely. You know. Um, but if they have no empathy, then why would they want to hurt somebody? Um, because because empathy empathy is not empathy is a positive emotion. Because it's fun. Okay, wanting to hurt someone is a very antagonistic emotion. Wanting to hurt someone at some level might even give them a little pleasure. Power, for sure. It's, it's interesting to me that someone cannot be empathetic but then want to hurt somebody because to me you would no. have to have the empathy in order to even know what it's no. like to hurt somebody. There's a difference between empathy and understanding. Mm. You can understand what, because in, oh. it's, it's like, that's why psychopaths that make sense. great salesmen. Because they understand a person, they can read a person and immediately say, You don't need to be able to have affective empathy in order to hurt somebody. We can read people as soon as we walk into a room. We know exactly who you are. We can mirror you to a, a crazy degree. And we can tell you everything you want to hear and then crush you like a bug. Because it's easy. I understand you. I don't need to feel you. Let's just say that. I got his vulnerability. I'm going to make him buy a car. God. Psychopaths are great salesmen. Some salesmen of cars, timeshares, all the, all that stuff where they're upselling and almost taking advantage of someone sometimes, making them. This is like my uncle. He has done this so many times, selling the same house three times, convincing my mom that he's going to give her the money. It's been 17 years. There's no money take on more money and cost of something than they really should. But no, 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 it's that he was able to be superficially charming. Psychopaths and sociopaths and narcissists make great chameleons. They're definitely able to change the situation to get what they want. And psychopaths in particular and sociopaths, are they, they view the world as an instrument to fulfill their desires. Mm. That's really what they're about, which is what it's awful because they're going to often discard a partner when they don't have much use for them or expect them to be, have a very specific role. So why would I keep someone around when they serve me no purpose? I recommend that empaths shouldn't do this either. Why are you wasting your own time? They may have married her and she may have had their kids. Now she's going to have to put up with their affairs because they want something else. And too bad if you don't like it. This is the new world order and I will destroy you in court. It's that kind of thing. That is insane. Yeah, it's chilling. It's I chilling. want to leave it right there. I have learned more about sociopaths and psychopaths than I ever thought possible. Well, that was a lot of fun. Be sure to like and subscribe because if you like these React videos, I'm going to do a whole lot more of them. Stay tuned.